Hi, I'm Timothy Priscilla, and I'm with my Math 1325 class today, and we're going to do a problem illustrating the first derivative test. And notice I conveniently have the steps written up here so that I can keep looking back at them as we do the problem. Here's the problem I want to look at, okay? Find the intervals on which the function is increasing, the intervals on which the function is decreasing, and the local extrema, and the function is the... Uh, trinomial f of x is a trinomial function f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 60x cubed plus 11. Let me write that problem down so I can move this sheet of paper. And f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 60x cubed plus 11. So For, to uh, determine increasing, decreasing, or local extrema, we use the first derivative test. The first thing we do, we find f prime at x. So let's find f prime. What's the derivative of, uh, derivative of our function? Differentiating, we get 12x cubed, keep going, minus 180x squared, and the derivative of the 11 is 0. So I found f prime. That was the first step. Since this is the first example we've done of the first derivative test, I'm going to number each step. There was step number 1. Step number 2, we want to know where is f prime equal to 0? Where is f prime equal to 0? So set f prime equal to 0. And let's see, we have a common factor there. Both of those terms have a common variable factor of. Oh, well, okay, so they have a common, uh, they have a common uh, constant factor of 12. You're right, and a variable factor of x squared. So I'm going to take out a 12x squared. And inside the parentheses, I'll have an x minus. 180 divided by 12, is that 15? Set each factor equal to 0. Set the 12x squared equal to 0. Set the x minus 15 equal to 0. This first equation is painless enough. What does that give us? x equals... Okay, hmm? Yeah, you're right. 12x squared is equal to 0. That means x is equal to... Zero, okay. Here, this one gives us x is equal to 15. And those are my first two critical numbers. Critical number, critical number. Third step, we ask ourselves, where is f prime undefined? This is a polynomial function. Our function is a polynomial function. Will it ever be undefined? No. no, so it's always defined. So step number three, we just skip it. F prime's always defined. F prime is always defined. So we just skip this step. And this is one of those things I can't imagine you'd want to write that out as you're doing your homework for each polynomial function. Just make a note, okay, skip it. And what did I say? That third step prim uh, applies primarily to functions that have what? Square roots with variables underneath them and variables and denominators. So that's primarily for our purposes. It's primarily rational functions and square root functions. Polynomial functions, we just skip it, uh, skip that step. Step number four, we label our critical numbers on a number line. So we're labeling our critical numbers. This is step number four, right there. We're going to label our critical numbers on a number line. There's my number line. And 
And we're going to be looking at the sine of f prime. So notice how I write that out there on the side of the number line. Let me move this up so y'all can see it. There. We're looking at the sine of f prime. We have to label our critical numbers. We had 0 and 15. Step number five, choose a number in each interval and test uh, uh, f prime. If f prime is positive on that interval, that means the function's increasing. If f prime is negative, that means the function's decreasing. So we need a number. We have three intervals. Give me a number to the left of zero, something that's easy to plug in. What do y'all want to use? Okay, so we're going to test negative one. Give me a number between zero and 15. Something that's easy to plug in. One, is that what I heard? Okay. And give me a number to the right of 15. Something that's easy to plug in. 20, good. Okay, let's use 20. That's easy to plug in. So, plugging in negative one into F prime. And F prime is up here, that 12x cubed minus 180x squared. So I'm going to rewrite that right now. F prime is 12x cubed minus 180x squared. Plugging in the negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is a negative 1 times 12. So that's when x is equal to negative 1, F prime is a negative 12. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1, so minus 180. The exact value doesn't matter. When you plugged in negative 1, was it positive or negative? negative? Negative, that's all that matters. So the derivative is negative. That means the function's decreasing. Now let's plug in positive 1. Plug it into that derivative. That'll give us just a 12 minus a 180, <coughs> positive or negative? Negative. It's negative again. So the graph leveled off at zero, leveled off for a moment, and you thought it was going to change directions, but it didn't. It then just continued decreasing. And finally, plug in 20. Remember, all that matters is positive or negative. We're plugging in 20. That's a 12 times a 20 cubed minus a 180 times 20 squared. So 20 cubed, that's what, an 8,000 minus 180. Uh, 20 squared is a 400, so it's a 180 times a 400. That's a, as a, okay, so it's a, I'll write it like this, a 180 times a 400, and just tell me the sum total, was it positive or negative? Positive. So finally the graph changed directions and started increasing. I guess, uh, let me number this. This was the testing part. That was step five in my sequence of steps. Is that how I stated the sequence of steps for y'all? Yeah. Okay, that was step five. And let's summarize now. When is the function increasing? When is it decreasing? Local max and a local minimum. And at this point, you're just looking at the number line. You're just looking at the number line to tell the uh, to answer the question. Local maximum, uh, no, increasing. Over what interval is the function increasing? It, does it ever increase? Yes. yes, it increases from 15 to infinity. Where does it decrease? Okay, so negative infinity up to zero, comma, zero to 15. Oh, there's my number line. 
Do we have a local maximum? If so, where? A local maximum occurs when the function's increasing on one side of a critical number and decreasing on the other. That never happened, so there is none. A local minimum, does that happen? Yes. yes. A local minimum occurs when the function is decreasing on one side of the critical number and then it starts to increase, decrease, increase. It looks like we have a local minimum occurring at x equals 15. A word of warning. There are two different approaches for identifying the location of local extrema. But you, they may want you to give it as in terms of the x value, or they may want it as an ordered pair. And so, and you'll just have to uh, look at the problem and see how they want it. When I look at this problem here, where is this problem? There it is. Okay. He said the function's increasing from 15 to infinity. We said the function is decreasing from negative infinity to zero and from zero to 15. Which one of these do we choose for our uh, uh, local extrema? A, there's a local minimum at x equals 15. Any questions there? Once again, this is an excellent example to illustrate the steps in the uh, first derivative <coughs> test.